We have traveled all over East Africa, finding hardworking farmers who are making a good life on their shambas. We want to learn from them, turn their farms into good businesses, and help them increase their profits. Join us and see how our farmers benefit from the experts' advice. And share their experiences as we shape up their shambas. <laughs> Karibu to the Shamba Shape Up Safari. Hello and welcome to Shamba Shepa. Today we are in Meru County where we are visiting Stephen and Agnes's Shamba. And we have exciting new ideas we'd like to share with you. Ideas that could make you money. Mm, can't be so bad. So, let's go meet the farmers. We are visiting Stephen and Agnes Murioki. They have three children and one at school. Stephen and Agnes have a six-acre farm with bananas, maize, cows, chickens and a new greenhouse. Hello, Sister Stephen, how are you? I'm very fine. Yes. Show us your shampoo. Yeah, come on, come on. All right, all right. This family grows a lot. Cabbage. Maize. Potatoes. Some worried geese. Six cows and three heifers. Not forgetting a few chickens as well. These are my tomatoes uh -huh. in a greenhouse. Your shamba looks pretty good. Oh, are you yes, sure oh, you yes. have any problems here? Of course they're there. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we have pest problems in case of uh, tomatoes. And when it comes to maize, mm -hmm. you have the, the storage problem. Don't worry, we're here and we'll see what we can do. Okay, thank you. Thank you very thank much. You. It's time to pitch the tent and get ready for work. So, uh, Stephen's farm is doing very well, but I think he needs our help. And we've got lots of good ideas I'd like to introduce him to. We'll convince him to get back into French bean farming. How to deal with greenhouse pests. How to get a better price for your maize. And how to save your soil. The first step in shaping your Piyoshamba is finding out how healthy your soil is. I'm going to meet up with Steven and take him to a soil care expert. And I'm going to find out the best prices for your maize. Well, see you later, Naomi. See you later, Tony. Knowing which crops will grow best in your Shamba's soil, all the right fertilizer to use is a first step to getting a bumper harvest. Austin has come with the mobile soil testing lab to test this soil. The sample is taken from a field Stephen wants to plant maize in. When you take a soil sample, get six or seven samples from across the field. Work in a zigzag pattern to get the best samples. Mix all the samples from one field, put in a bag and labeled clearly with the name crop and the address of the farmer. There are three main soil tests to do in the lab. First, soil acidity or pH. Maize likes soil with a higher pH. If you're growing the wrong crop for your soil's pH, you will have problems. The second test is for soil fertility. This tells you how much fertilizer you need to add and what kind to feed your crop well. Finally, you need to check soil health. This tells you if you should add compost or manure, which helps hold water in the soil and make the soil stronger. Well, the test is almost done. I think we should leave the experts to finish in peace. So Stephen, the soil test is going to take a while. So while they are doing it, why don't you join Naomi with an expert? And he's going to help you to make sure you get a good price for your maize. Let me go. All right, Stephen. Thank you. Elliot from the Cereal Growers Association has come to see if he can help Stephen improve his maize store. Farmers lose one third of their maize every year just because it isn't stored properly. Imagine how much money we could make if we didn't lose that maize. Let's see what Elliot has to say about this maize store. Okay. So we've been inspecting your, your store. Yes. You're thinking of best ways to help you improve it. It's true. Yeah. Okay. Let me start with the damages or the pallets. They should be at least raised high. They are too low on the ground. Mm -hmm. This one, they can easily cause your grain to be uh, damp because um, in the evenings it can easily get wet and you cannot tell when they are down there. 
Second thing, you need a scouting space that is at least one meter from the wall mm. so that you can be able to move around and see. For example, you can be having a rodent mm -hmm. in this store. It's not easy for you to identify when they are in. Then the other thing is um, I've been able to observe and uh, I've seen, uh, mm -hmm. for example, he has not uh, uh, separated other uh, agricultural equipment, for example, like the knapsack, like the fertilizer from the store. Mm -hmm. These are things that needs to be in another different room right. uh, from the, uh, the store that you keep your food. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. The stacking itself, I can see as stacked very well. Right. You can see the rares are good. Now, let me ask, why is it important, you know, to store maize? During harvest, the prices goes too low, mm -hmm. and uh, at an average price of approximately uh, 1,500 shillings per bag. But uh, within one month, these prices do go as high as um, 3,000 shillings, yeah. especially if there is scarcity. Stephen knows how he can make more if he keeps his maize for better prices. But if he loses part of his harvest to rats and weevils, it won't help. We control the weevil via the pig's bags. You can see there are the two uh, polythene papers inside here. They are not going to allow air inside. Mm -hmm. So you know every living thing, uh, Naomi and Steve, mm -hmm. require um, air for it to survive. Right. So mm -hmm. if you use this bag, it makes the, 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 the weevil suffocate inside and even the eggs. This bag is going for uh, 250 shillings. At least for how long can you store your grain here? Mm. Five years. And what's the need of having two polythene papers inside? Mm. These two papers mm -hmm. makes it more safe. Okay. Mm -hmm. That is, uh, you'll be at least sure that there can't be hair inside. Once you are using these bags, mm. is there a need of dusting uh, your grain first before mm -hmm. you put it in? Oh, okay. the dusting chemicals are used to kill weevils. This bag is killing weevils, so you don't need any dusts. Mm -hmm. And actually for those that have even been resistant to the chemical, mm -hmm. this bag is able to clear it. Oh, mm -hmm. wow. Fantastic. Wow. Yes. Yeah. So what are the advantages of using this bag instead of using chemicals? First of all, we talked about the economic uh, point of view, where this bag is a uh, reusable, you can use it several times. Mm -hmm. So in this case, it's more cost effective to a small older farmer. Like now they get two seasons every year. Mm -hmm. With every two seasons, be assured a farmer will go to the market to buy chemicals. Mm -hmm. If this bag is used for the next five years, mm -hmm. it means it will have stored grain for 10 seasons. Right. You have to dry your grain well before you store in this bag. And the drying well means that you have to check the moisture levels. Mm -hmm. It's supposed to be below 13.5%. And this moisture, you are going to check using a moisture meter. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, when using a PIX bag, remember, the grain must be clean and dry before you put it into the bag. Check the inner liner for holes and repairs and insert the two liners into the woven one. Fold over the tops, ready for tying. Fill the bags and shake to remove air pockets. When the bag is full, first tie the inner bag. Next, tie the middle bag. Finally, tie the outer bag. Don't store in direct sunlight. Keep the bags off the ground. Don't pile them against the wall. Follow these instructions and your grains will keep in the store for up to five years. So now that Stephen has had his maize storage sorted, it's all now down to soil cares to help him increase his maize yield. That's right, Naomi. The more he can harvest, the more he can store, and the more money he can make. Austin, what do the results say? First, let me ask you. Um, I can see you have a patch of uh, maize here. Yeah. Um, how long ago did you plant the maize? Uh, two months ago. Two months? Yeah. Should they be looking like that? No, they two shouldn't. Months. From what I can see, yeah. there's a purpling of the stems. There's also yellowing of the leaves. Yes. I think you have a soil problem. What is the problem? Now, according to your results, yes. after we did the analysis on the patch of land that you want to plant next, you have too much acid on your soil. Oh, my soil eh? Yeah. The organic carbon content on your farm is very low. That means that uh, your nutrient uptake is limited. 
Now you need to add compost to your farm. Uh, I can see that you are very low on nitrogen. Now nitrogen is important in the formation of chlorophyll. Okay. So a telltale sign of nitrogen would be the yellowing of leaves, of older leaves. Uh, you also have a very low pH, which means your soil has very high acidity. Acidity is a very important part of soil. Yeah. Now you might have nutrients in your soil, but when the acid is too high, the crops cannot take the nutrients. In this I like using the example of uh, say food. So you have food on the table. Yeah. But there's too much, uh, there's too much pepper. Can't eat it. Now there's some people who can take really high levels of pepper. Mm -hmm. There's some who can't take even a little bit of pepper. That's the same with your soil. If yeah, it's yeah. too high, yeah. there might be nutrients in your soil, but the plants cannot take them up. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Now from those particular results, yeah. what crops are suitable yeah. for the farmer here to grow? From these results, I can see that the farmer would uh, do well to plant potatoes because of uh, his uh, acidity levels. Mm. But if he needs to plant other crops, say grains yeah. and vegetables, yeah. then he might need to reduce the acid level first and foremost. How does he do that? Very simple, Tony. By the use of lime. How do I apply lime? Then I think we should just demonstrate that. The best lime to use is finely ground calcium carbonate. You need less and acts fast. The best time to lime is before planting, as the lime works better if you dig it into the soil, but the soil must be wet when you lime. It takes a few seasons for the lime to bring the soil pH down, but once it's right, your crops will do so much better. Steven might need to make his store bigger. So we've learned the importance of soil testing. And how to successfully store your maize so that you can sell them when the price is right. But on this farm, Stephen is an expert. And we can't wait to hear his top tip on farming. It's a dry area. We don't receive much rain. What I would recommend the farmers, with the drip irrigation, you save around 70% of the water and the produce will be perfect. Water is life, Naomi. Yes, 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 especially for the farmer. True. Coming up after the break, we will deal with tomatoes. Saving the soil. And new ways to grow French beans. If you'd like to receive all our Shamba Shepherd leaflets, SMS the word all together with your name and address to 30606. If you'd like to receive just the leaflet for this Shamba, SMS the name of the farmer together with your name and address to 30606. Welcome back to Shamba Shepherd. We are in Meru County and we are visiting Stephen and Agnes's Shamba. Now we've done a lot, but we still have more to do. Time is running out. So first I'm going to find out how to deal with greenhouse pests. And I'm going to find out how you can make money from French beans. So see you later. All right. Osho have been helping farmers for over 20 years with good chemicals for their farms. They have a wide range of solutions from pesticides to foliar feeds. So, whatever the problem, they have something to help. And just like our farmers, they are proud that their products are made in Kenya. Local products providing local solutions. We are appealing to our farming community. Made in Kenya is what they do well. We want to be part of that by producing our chemicals and products in Kenya because there is a good range. Any problem that is there, we most probably have a solution, and if not there, we are looking for one and we are availing the one. Now, Stephen has been growing tomatoes and they've been doing very well, but I think they should do even better. So, let's get an Osho expert to give Stephen some advice. Yeah, so Kennedy, you've had a look at the greenhouse, so yeah. what are your thoughts? Maybe you walk around as I show you. Yes. Uh, like, uh, if you look here, mm -hmm. you'll be able to see the leaves drying, this is a disease we mm -hmm. call uh, late blight. Late blight is very bad because mm -hmm. it results in the de death of uh, the leaves. Mm -hmm. That's why you can see the plant is almost looking like so it's already over. Yeah. And this one we can control using a product called Mistress. Mm -hmm. Mistress is a fungicide that is both curative 
mm -hmm. and prevent it. Mm -hmm. Also, if you look in there, on the underside of the leaves, you see a whitish thing, a powder-like thing. Eh? Mm -hmm. This is what we call a powdery mildew, and this we control using a product called control. Mm -hmm. Control is, is both curative and preventive against the, the disease. Mm -hmm. uh, these two diseases are very dangerous if mm -hmm. uh, left unattended, mm -hmm. and uh, this is why, despite the age of the crop, Mm -hmm. You can see the crop is looking a bit too old mm -hmm. and if you don't do something, mm -hmm. you see your entire greenhouse drying mm -hmm. up. So it's good right. you start early and uh, use those products mm -hmm. to control. As we move on, mm. you'll also see instances of uh, white flies. Mm -hmm. Tiny but very destructive mm -hmm. because uh, they limit the nutrients right. that the crop enjoys. And so you get reduced use as well as they are vectors of diseases. Mm -hmm. So we always recommend mm -hmm. we start managing white flies in time. And for these ones, we need to use a product called uh, Nibesidin. Mm -hmm. It's going to be able to manage them mm -hmm. if you start early. So use Nibesidin as early as time for transplanting all mm -hmm. the way until you harvest because it's organic mm -hmm. and has little residue effect on your crops. Okay, Buana Steven, mm. if you look down below, mm. the soil also looks a bit dry mm. and uh, that uh, results into water stress. Eh? Mm. And uh, once the plants are stressed, you start now seeing uh, your flowers defoliating, or what we call flower abortion. Eh? Mm -hmm. That's why you can see our flowers are, are drying up. And this is a result of uh, water stress or mm -hmm. lack of enough moisture in the mm -hmm. soil. Irrigation should be more regular mm -hmm. and uh, adequate. Mm -hmm. I have seen your tomatoes are also not ripening properly. Tomato should have a deep red color, okay. and uh, this is uh, somehow yellowish. Eh? Mm. This comes as a result of uh, having a uh, deficiency in calcium, mm -hmm. so we recommend use use grow calcium. Use grow calcium. Mm. So far, I've ever said this uh, crop for this is my seventh month. Ah, mm -hmm. Commendable. In terms of the amount of I've, I've, I've come from this place, mm. I've uh, around two hundred and seventy thousand shillings. Shillings. Do you think it's done very well? Yes. Yeah, he's done a commendable job. If yes. he was harvested for seven months mm -hmm. and counting, right. I think uh, if with proper attention, he can do much more. Okay, Buona Steven, mm -hmm. which crop are you intending to plant here next? I'm intending to put up uh, onions mm -hmm. for the crop rotation. Ah, mm -hmm. That's good. Yeah, actually, yeah. it's going to do rotation with onions because yeah. they are not in the same family. Yeah. There is no disease build up. Mm -hmm. Don't do like other people when they, they rotate tomatoes and capsicum because they said capsicum fetches more money. Mm. Don't be like them because mm. you end up ruining yourself. Mm. You, they, the disease build up, mm. so it's good you rotate with a crop that is not in the same family with mm. tomatoes. Mm. So, Buona Steven, again, mm. uh, do you intend to do more greenhouses or this, you are comfortable with this one? Oh, yes, I would like to do that mm -hmm. then because this is my first one okay. and I've seen the outcome. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So my intention is to have around 10 greenhouses in my chamber oh. so wow. that even crop rotation can be easier. Mm -hmm. yeah. Wow. yeah. Those are great plants. I'm looking forward to seeing 10 greenhouses here next time we visit. Stevens French beans business got ruined by the export ban. Buyers wouldn't take the beans, so he stopped growing them. Real IPM, a company who makes biological pests and disease control products, has sent their organic expert, Sebastian, to learn about Stephen's beans. So, Stephen, yeah? you used to grow French beans. Oh, yes. Mm -hmm. I used to mm. grow French beans in the first two, two three years. In this portion and the other portion there. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Oh, I couldn't go on with the French bean grow growing because yeah. of the market. The market The itself. market was the greatest problem. And um, was chemical a big problem as well when oh, you were doing the yes. French beans? Oh, yes. When we were growing French beans, yes. we could spray some chemical today. And in a few days, two, three days later, mm -hmm. you see the same problem arising oh, again. Oh, then yeah. definitely that must have led to overuse of the chemicals. Okay. And I think I understand where the problem is. Mm. Um, I would like to take you and we discuss some more on um, how we can help Ooh, you improve yes, your French you bean farming. Ah. So, Sebastian, yes. you said the solution for our farmer here. Yes. Which solutions do you have? It is evident that you had definitely problem with overuse of chemicals. Beans used to be a great way to make money. I hope Sebastian has some good ideas to get around the chemical problems. One of those products that you can actually use is Campaign under the Mazao flagship. This will ensure you have sustained production 
and sustain yield by controlling your pests. Yes. Thrips is a very big problem, especially in French bean farming. It is quite easy to use. One packet contains two lovely looking sachets mm -hmm. for two knapsack uses. One sachet is enough for one 20 liter knapsack. You put it in the knapsack and you just spray on your crop. This will provide effective protection against strips and white flies. Mm -hmm. Yes. The second product I have for you is called Regain. It is very effective against thrust and anthracnose, which is a very, very big problem also in French bean growing. One packet like this is actually enough for four knapsacks of 20 liters each. So you get one knapsack, put in 25 mils of the product, and then you spray. You spray on your leaves, and this is very effective against controlling rust, like I'd said, and also anthracnose. Sustain is both a powerful biological fertilizer and a pesticide, which controls fusarium wilt and nematodes. It nourishes plants while also attacking pests that live in the soil. It's actually used when the French beans have just started germinating in the field. You apply the first application seven days after germination. You just drench it on the root zone and continue. Do a repeat after seven days and your French beans is good to go. To cap it off, I know red spider mites might also be a challenge mm -hmm. that you will experience in French bean growing. With this product called Achieve, we ensure you achieve success in a French bean growing by getting rid of those pests called red spider mites. And in that way, you're able to get your French beans to the exporters with no problems at all. Are there any other products that a farmer can use organically to get rid of the pests? Now that you mentioned that, gladly we have these two traps over here. We have a blue one and a yellow one that can fit in any organic bean growing. The yellow one will actually take care of uh, all flying insects. But in this case, you're mostly concerned with white flies, leaf miners, and the other troublesome pests in your French beans. The blue one will take care of the trips and in this way you'll be able to get your French beans to the market with no problem. Mm -hmm. These blue thrip straps are so easy to use. Just hang them over the crop and the thrips are attracted to the blue color so they get stuck on the trap. Easy and no chemicals. Could I know how, where I can get the product from? Now the products are readily available in any agrovet shop in Kenya. Yes. Now Sebastian, can you guarantee the farmer good, good, good harvest after using these products and also markets? The products that I just talked about will actually lead to a 30% increase in yield. That is very good news, Bona Steven, yeah, isn't good, it? Good. This will ensure that you have continued profits. Yeah. French bean growing has a readily available market so long as you do it in the correct way ensuring your produce is free from chemicals and free from residues. Mm -hmm. yes. Now, how can you help a farmer like um, Stephen here be able to get a good, good harvest? The first step we will take with Buona Stephen mm -hmm. is to work with you and your grow groups around your community. Yes. We will ensure we set up demonstration plots and we'll also do trainings free of charge and ensure that you get to see the products in action. I hope, you. Steve, now you've heard from the expert. Yeah, from so you. next time you are growing the French beans, you know what to do yeah. and you know what to use. It's true. We have an expert from FAO, Food and Agriculture Organization, coming to look at Steven's soil. Barak doesn't look happy with this soil. It is dry and crumbly and easily blows away. Steven also takes all the crops residue away, leaving the soil bare. Mr. Barak, why should the soil have a cover? It can easily be carried by wind. The soil microbes will die. Then that soil is losing its health. Mm. And uh, he needs to co adopt conservation agriculture. Ah. So what is conservation agriculture? Minimum soil disturbance, permanent soil cover, and crop rotation. When you practice those three principles, then you are actually f doing conservation agriculture farming. Mm. Steve, do you know anything about conservation agriculture? No, I have not even heard of it. Never? Never. Ooh, it's never heard of it. Uh. Why is it important for farmers to practice that? Uh, stable crop yield, good yields also. Conservation agriculture will assure you uh, as a farmer to have consistent yields uh, throughout the year regardless of high fluctuations in climate 
uh, change in terms of rainfall, high temperatures. So Stephen, how do you usually plow your shamba? I usually use tractor and uh, other times I use uh, oxen. Oh, I think you are killing your soil. You are killing your soil. What should I do? Adopt the minimum tillage. I would like to know how many times do you plow in a year? Two times. Two times. Yeah. During planting, you plant using what? Oxen. They harden the soil. The water cannot go beyond 20 to 30 centimeters. This plant cannot go bigger than this. Look, because of the hard pan, the tap root, it is not going down the, vertically down the soil. Other roots are J-shaped. They cannot go down. And that makes the plant not be able to grow well. You can use the plow, oxen plow. You can use uh, subsoilers that are attached to the tractor. Then you only open where you, you want to open. I am sure you will cut the expenses by 30% by just adopting conservation agriculture. If you use a subsoiler, you can break the hard pan in your soil. This lets the roots grow deeper and get more water. If you only plow the place you will plant, your soil will be healthier and you won't get blown away by the wind. Remember, always leave some cover on your fields. Bare soil is unhappy soil. So where do you see yourself in, let's say, one year's time? In a year's time, I tell you, Wanatone, I think you won't believe it. Mm -hmm. I'll be far. <laughs> Very far. Very How far. far. <laughs> I think even my people from my area will notice the difference. Good. We were very happy to hear that. And that is not the end, Stephen. It's not. Not for you, not for you at home. You can get in touch with us by using our SMS service or calling our call center. Look at my maze. They look good, don't they? The experts at Aishamba advised me to use a different variety, and this year I'll be making a lot more profit. If you need information on your Shamba, SMS the word JOIN to 21606, and Aishamba experts will send you free information every week. So Stephen, are you going to be using our SMS number? Oh yes, I will, do, I will be using that one. Mm -hmm. I think I got your contact yesterday, Hi Shamba. Mm -hmm. I will be using it whenever I get a problem anywhere in my Shamba. Okay. I will just be SMSing. Okay, great. Yeah. So our work is done, so we are off to the next Shamba. Shamba Shape Up is also online. Visit us at shambashapeup.com. Select the episode and click play. You can also visit Shamba Shape Up's Facebook page where you can enter great competitions and also get involved in great, great discussions. Shamba Shepa is also on Twitter, at Shamba Shepa.